What could we even say in the place, Makam Nuchasai, the Chassam Soifer, in the whole history of the Jewish people, did we ever have somebody who occupied three central positions in Klai Yisrael and he did each one, he was Mitzdayin in each one. Number one, he was the Rav of Pressburg. He was the Rav of the Kehillah. He was a great Rav for Kehillah's Pressburg. Number two, he was a great Rosh Hashiva. He was the one who founded the yeshiva of Preshberg. He, his whole life, his ambition was to, be, to initiate and to found the yeshiva in Preshberg. So he was a Rav, he was a Rosh Hashiva, and he was also the greatest Meshiv in the generation in terms of writing Shal Sechuvas. Never did we have somebody who occupied all three positions the way the Chassam Soifer did. Just to give you a little bit of a, a glimpse, into one particular unique facet of the life of the Chassam Soifer that really, perhaps we could say, captures the essence of the Chassam Soifer. In the Drosh's Chassam Soifer, Daf Yud Ches, he says, V'hine ze yoyser me'ar bo'im shona, to'ydo l'kel yisbarach, sh'loi nizbat lo yeshiva me'al shulchani afilu yom echad. That he did not stop teaching Torah for more than 40 years. In fact, Rav Shimon Soifer says, that he heard from the Chassam Soifer, that from the day he began to teach Talmidim, he did not miss one day that he was not Marbet's Torah, except for Tisha B'av. But even Yom Kippur, the night of Yom Kippur, the Chassam Soifer gathered Talmidim to teach the halachas of the Avoidah of Yom Kippur. I want to share with you one question that the Chassam Soifer asks, that again will bring out this particular point of the Kaya Harbatzas Torah of the Chassam Soifer, the Chassam Soifer in many different Mekayimais, He's bothered by the following question, and you can almost feel the worry and the anxiety in the heart of the Chassam Soifer. He asks that if the Navi Yeshaya says that in the, in the future, the day will come, if the day will come that Kulam Yadu Oisi Mi Ketanam, that if one day, that everyone will know Hashem, ask Sam Soifer, so how will, be, we, how will we be able to be Mekayim in the mitzvah of Harbatsa Satoira? This is a question that occupies many different Mekayimists in the writings of Sam Soifer. So in some places, Sam Soifer says, well, it will be Mekayim, the mitzvah of Harbatsa Satoira, by teaching the Umay Sa'ilam. Elsewhere, he says, even the Umay Sa'ilam will know Hashem. So he says that in the future, Kla Yisrael will have to teach. The Malachi Hashares. But you could see the worry in the heart of the Sefer. How will we be Bikayim, the most important mitzvah of Harbatsa Satoira? Chsam Sefer says in Parshas Kedoshim, What does Rabbi Kiva say? Amar Rabbi Kiva, Zekla Goda Batoira. Zekla Goda Batoira. Obviously, it's a klal in the Torah. Then what? It's not a klal in the telephone book. What do you mean, Zekla Goda Batoira? Says the Chsam Sefer, when Rabbi Akiva says that Klal Gadot he means as follows. It's Rabbi Akiva Lashitase. Rabbi Akiva's opinion is if two people are going in the Midbar and there's only one glass of water. So what does Rabbi Akiva hold? Rabbi Akiva says, Chayecha Koidem. You take the glass of water. It belongs to you. So when it comes to Gashmias, we don't say, V'yahavta Lorecha Kamaycha. Says some sort of, it's a mistake to think you have to love your friend like yourself. It's not true. You love yourself more. Chayecha koidem. But when it comes to Torah, when it comes to Harbatzas Torah, then we say, V'yahavta l'recha kamoicha ze klal gadol davka bat Torah. Everything else we say, Chayecha koidem. When it comes to Ruchnias, you have to put, klal Yisrael, you have to put your friend ahead of yourself. This was the great ideology of the Chassam Seifer. Therefore, Rabbi Shimon Seifer brings in the Petuch Chaysam that the Chassam Seifer said there's only one individual in the whole Tanakh who's called someone who loves Hashem and then Hashem loves them. Avraham Avinu. Avraham is called Avraham Oyhavi. Why? Because Avraham Avinu gave up of, of himself, he gave up of his own Ruchnias to teach Torah to others. That's the greatest simon of Avas Hashem. And this is the uh, Torah that not only the Chassam Seifer was Mechadesh, but really epitomizes the life of the Chassam Seifer. Should be Zaycha, then the Smakam, all of our Tfilas should be Neskabel, Barachim and Baratzain. Okay, we're here in Bratislava in Slovakia. 
Here we're at the Kever. We were just at the Chassam Soifer. We're at the Kever of Rabbi Kivegar Harishain, the author of Mishnas de Rabbi Akiva, who was Nifter in 1758. He was a Talmud of Rabbi Tzvi Hersh Harif and a Talmud by the Shev Yaakov. And in 1756, he becomes the assistant to Rav Moshe Harif in Preshburg. When he was a child, he went to Rabbi Tzvi Hersh Harif with a very difficult question. And later on, when Rabbi Akiva Egar Rishain was, this, was accepted in his Rabbanus in Haberstadt, so Rabbi Tzvi Hersh said that a city that could produce such an eminent Talmud Chacham will certainly be successful. Now, Rav Moshe Harif, who Rabbi Kivegar was his assistant, was nifter on Gimel Elul Tov Kuf Yud Ches. And Rabbi Kivegar was masked him. He comes home, and immediately upon coming home, Rabbi Kivegar Harishain became ill. He was nifter 11 days later, on the 15th of Elul, and at his Levaya, the masked said, Achar Osar Yoim Mechayrev. Only 11 days pass since the Ptira of Ramay Sheharif, and now Rabbi Kiva Eger Risha and his Halach Lalamai. Rabbi Kiva Eger, who we're familiar with, was a grandson of Rabbi Kiva Eger Risha, and he, qu- he quotes the Mishnah's Rabbi Kiva and the Drush, drush Vechidosh on Psachim, Chafal from Abbez, and in Shal Suchus Rabbi Kiva Eger, Simen Peiches, Suchusai Yagei Noleno. Here, is Rav Moshe Harif, we mentioned he was the Rav who Rav Kiva Egerishan was the assistant to. Oh yeah. Okay, it's a great schuss. We're at the Kever as well of Rav Meshulam Igra. Rav Meshulam Igra lived from 1742 to 1801. He came from a rabbinic family from Bokzaz of Galicia. By nine years old, he already gave complex Pilpulim in Brody. At 17 years old, he had his first rabbinic post. He was the Rebbe of Ramart Chabanet. He was the Rebbe of the Nasiris Hamishbat. In 1793, he became the Rav in Preshburg, and he's best known because his immediate successor was the Chassam Soifer. So just to have in your mind, first Rav Meshulam Igra, and then the Chassam Soifer. He published Shaila Suchuvas Rama, Rama, Rav Meshulam Igra. And uh, again, he was the Rav in Pressburg, followed by the Chassam Seifer, Zechusam Yagen Oleinu. We're here in Pressburg at the kever of the Avbez in Pressburg, Rav Daniel Prutztitz, who was very close with the Chassam Seifer. As you see, he's buried Liad Mamish of the Chassam Seifer. He's the author of the Machenedon. He was a student of Rav Meir Berebi, and he served as the Avbez then over here. We have with us on our trip Rabbi Yaakov Pollock, who is a descendant of Avraham Pollock, who is a descendant of Rav Daniel Prutzitz. We have a chidush from Rav Daniel that's published in the Sefer Elef, Ham- Elef Kasav. Elef Kasav. That when HaKadosh Baruch Hu taught the Aser Sadibar Yisrael Yisrael, this is the chidush of Rav Daniel Prutzitz, he taught each dibur on each day of the Aser Simei Tshuva. So on the first day, was Anoichi Hashem Lekecha. On the second day was Lagi Alecha Lehim Achirim, which uh, says Rabbi Yenis and Ibishitz, that's why Rosh Hashanah is Yoyma Arichta. Because since Anoichi and Lagi Alecha Bedibarachas Nemra, so therefore the two days of Rosh Hashanah are also considered Kiyama Arichta. The tenth day, Hashem taught the Dibor of Leisachmoid. That's why the Gra teaches Leisachmoid encapsulates Kala Terakula. Amen. Okay, at the word Zoycha, to be at the Kavadar of the Chassam Soifer, in the closing time of Lagba Eimer, at the conclusion of Lagba Eimer, Chassam Soifer is inextricably bound with the number 33. First of all, Chassam Soifer led this Kahila for 33 years. Umoisha, Hayaroya, we're going to see Ksav Soifer also led the Kehillah, 33 years. Now, Ksav Soifer famously in his Chuvais, in Simon Reish Lamed Gimel, wonders what the reason for Lag Bo'imer is. He says it's the yard side of Rab Shimon, since when is the yard side of a tzaddik a joyous day? Usually it's a day of fasting. And even so, throughout the writings of the Chassam Soifer, Chassam Soifer supplies many, many various reasons for Lag Ba'imer, among which it's the day that the Mun began to fall. It's the day the Neshamas of Klal Yisrael were positioned in them when they left 
when they left Mitzrayim. It's the day the secrets of the Torah were given over to Klal Yisrael. So what was the Chassam Soifer's question about Lag Omer? But one of the great principles of Chassam Soifer was even though he had great reverence and great knowledge for Kabbalah, he held you do not mix Kabbalah with Halacha. In fact, Chassam Soifer writes, anyone who mixes Kabbalah with Halacha is over on the Isra of Shatnas and Klayim. So this is also part of the ideology of the Chassam Soifer, the distinct realms of the Halacha and the Kabbalah. Okay. We're standing here on the top of the mountain overlooking the city of Bratislava in Slovakia. We were at the kever of Chassam Soifer, who he said served this community 33 years. We're now at the kever of the Kassav Soifer, Rav Avram Shmuel Ben Yamin Soifer, who likewise served the Kehila, legend has it, 33 years. If you look at the Matseva, it says, Shimesh Bekeser Abanus Shanim Shloishim Ushtayim. 32 years. We'll see the Shevet Soifer as well. The Kassav Soifer was born in 1815. He only lived 57 years. Till 1872. At six years old, Rabbi Shmuel Wolf, this boy, fell ill. His name originally was Shmuel Ben Yamin Seifer. They added on Avraham as a school of Arichas Yamim. They called the Chevr Kadisha. They lit candles. The doctor said there's nothing they could do. The Chsam Seifer goes into the corner, and all of a sudden the boy cries out, Shema Yisrael. And the Chsam Seifer is reputed to have said that he asked for Yoivel Shonim. And the Ksav Sefer was given an additional 50 years. Now, living in the shadow of a father like the Chassam Sefer, the Ksav Sefer, however, excelled in his own right, first of all, in grooming Talmidim. Because the Chassam Sefer's personality was that you might think twice before you ask a question to someone who he, he didn't have to bring rayas to what he said. Whatever he said, kach nigzer men However, the Ksav Sefer he would deal very patiently with all the Talmidim. He would come to the yeshiva and for hours and hours they fought the Mochamtoi Shel Torah. The Ksav Sefer also excelled in his dealings with the government. He was an a, a eminent speaker, an eminent statesman for, for Klal Yisrael. So he continued the legacy of his father for another 33 years. Here we are after Lagba Oimer and the number 33 represents going above and beyond just the Nesiva Yisachachma, he took Kla Yisrael, Lamala Lamala. May all of our Tfilas be Neskabel, Barachamim of Ratzayin. Next to Ksav Soifer was his son, Amal Makayim, the Shevet Soifer, Reb Simcha Bunim Soifer. Benoi, Shal Rabbeinu Agado Baal Ksav Soifer, who is the son of Chassam Soifer. He continued the great lineage, the Shal Shalas Hagdoila. Also legend has it, he led the Kehila for 33 years. But when you look carefully, uh, the the Matseva says, the Chamesh Ushloishim Shana Shimesh Bekeser Harabanos. So that's a little trivia. Even though they say 33, 33, 33, it's really 33, 32, 35. The Shevet Soifer was compared to Rabbi Kiva Eger in terms of his quickness and his grasp. He was able to learn, for instance, six pages of Urim Vetumim of Rabbi Yonis and Ibeshitz, and once he learned it once, it was Kaman Demunach Bekisbe. I'll tell you something from the Shevet Soifer. We know that on Yom Kippur, the Avodah of the Kohen Gadol is Achas Lamala V'Sheva Lamata. What's the meaning of that? What are we trying to, what's the message of Achas Lamala V'Sheva Lamata? So the Ramah writes in the Taras Ha'ila that the Achas Lamala refers to the one name of the Yetzer HaToiv, Yetzer HaToiv. On the other hand, the Sheva Lamata refers to the seven names of the Yitzhahara. The Gemara Sukkah says Yitzhahara has seven names, which means seven koichais to be able to get us to fall. So the Shevet Sefer explained that this was like a Melot's toy for Klal Yisrael on Yom Kippur, where we're telling Hashem is Hashem have Rachmanus on us. We only have one force pulling us up, but we have seven forces pulling us down. And this was a way to be Melot's for Klal Yisrael on the Yom Hagado Vahanoira. This is a little bit of a flavor for the Shevet Seifer of Simcha Bunim Seifer, who led the Kila here for 35 Shanim, Lamed Hei, Zuchusa Yagen Aleinu. We're uh, learning a little bit about the life of the uh, Chassam Seifer and the background of the Chassam Seifer. We mentioned the Chassam Seifer's family originates in Rav Shimon of Frankfurt, the author of the Alkut Shemoni, who is a descendant of Rashi through Rav Yechanan Asandler 
and David HaMelech, Mitzar Imai. Some Sofer came from Reb Shmuel Shatin. Reb Shmuel Shatin was the author of the Kois Yeshuais on, on Seder Nazikin. Reb Shmuel Shatin is known as the Maharash Shach. The Maharash Shach. Now, the Chassam Soifer's parents did not have children for many years. And when Chassam Soifer's mother was finally expecting him, it was Zayin Tishrei. It was Erev Shabbos. And it was Samach Lashkia. And she was about to give birth and she sends word to the Rav of the city of Frankfurt Domain. Who is the Rav of the city? Rav Abish Chassid. He was the Rav of Frankfurt Domain, and she asked him, I know Shabbos is coming, and the city of Frankfurt is Makabal Shabbos by saying, Boi B'Shalom, could you delay Kabbalah Shabbos? I don't want the birth of my child to be the cause of Chilol Shabbos. And the Rav of the city, Rav Abish Chassid, saw Baruch HaKodesh, that this child was destined to be Matzal Klal Yisrael through his efforts, through his actions, through his tefillahs, and he acceded to her request and he delayed Kabbalah Shabbos in the city of Frankfurt. The Chassam Soifer was born, they said Mazel Tov, and then the city was Mekabel Shabbos. So this is the, uh, the birth, the miraculous birth of the Holy Chassam Soifer. Now the Chassam Soifer had many notable Talmidim. First of all, Rabbi Yehuda Asad, Rabbi Yehuda Asad, Shal Tshuvah Yehuda Yala, 1794 to 1866, the Rav Shmuel Ehrenfeld, who is the Chassan Soifer, Rav Hillel Kalamaya, Rav Hillel Lichtenstein, the author of the Maskil El Dol, also the Maharam Shik, Rav Moshe Shik, 1807 to 1879, the Kisav Soifer, Rav Ram Shmuel Benyamin Soifer, Rav Shimon Soifer, known as the Mikhtav Soifer, Rav Chaim Soifer, known as the Machane Chaim, these were all Talmidei Chassam Soifer. Rabbi Avram Shag. Who's Rabbi Avram Shag? Rabbi Avram Shag is the Rebbe of Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld. These were all Talmidei Chassam Soifer. Umehem Yatsa Torah L'chol Yisrael. Okay, a little bit more on the Kisav Soifer. At the end of Chassam Soifer's life, he was on his deathbed, and the Kisav Soifer was there. And the Chassam Soifer gives the Chassam Soifer an epic bracha. He mentions Kol HaBrachais HaMurais B'Chav Dalet Sifrei Kodesh and those standing there were astonished that the Chassam Soifer was able to summon all of these brachas in his last words. And then he turns to the Chassam Soifer and he says, don't be afraid, don't be worried. He says beautiful words, he says Zekeinecha Akiva Miminecha Your grandfather Akiva, Rabbi Kiva Eger He'll be on your right side always Zekeinecha Maharash Shach Bismaylecha The Kais Yeshuais, your other grandfather will be on your left side Malach Ploini Aroshcha Such and such Malach will be on your head Vegamani Avoy Acharecha Umilesi Estvarecha I will always be behind you as well the Ksav Soifer never took credit for himself, never self-aggrandized. When his children would sometimes feel haughty that they had a father like the Ksav Soifer, the Ksav Soifer would say, he would yell at them. He would say, why are you being arrogant? Just because you're my son? You don't think so-and-so's father has more zechuyas than I have? The Ksav Soifer had tremendous humility. However, he would interpret the Pasuk as follows. He would interpret the Pasuk, Zivche Eloikim Ruach Nishbara. An offering, a carbon to Hashem, is a broken heart. But you always have to be careful. Humility is very dangerous. Leiv Nishbar Venidke Eloikim Loi Sivze. Don't shame God through your humility. Many people shame Hashem through their humility. They say, you know, why should I say something to so-and-so? Who am I? What am I? So the Ksav Sefer would say, humility is all the carbonized put together, but don't disparage God because of your humility. Leiv nishbar v'nidke Eloi kim sivze. Don't be mevaza HaKadosh Baruch with your leiv nishbar v'nidke. 
Sav Soifer once interpreted, we have the Pasuk in Tehillim, Mizmar La'asaf, Eloikim Bo Goyim Benach Secha. And the question is, a Mizmar? Is it a Mizmar? Eloikim Bo Goyim Benach Secha, Kino Mi So the Sav Soifer would say as follows, you know what's worse than Gentiles defiling the Beis HaMikdash and Judaism? Jews defiling the Beis HaMikdash and Judaism. Because a Gentile can only destroy, he can't desecrate. A Jew could even desecrate. So if, when fighting the reform movement, the Ksav Sofer explained, Mizmar La'asaf, you know what the joy is? Goyim Bo'o Ben It was only Gentiles that came in, and it wasn't Jews like we have in our times. But in our times when we have to deal with Jews who defile and desecrate, that's an even greater Chilol Hashem. That's not a Mizmar La'asaf, that's Akina La'asaf. In the official biography of the Ksav Sofer, of the Chur HaMeshulash, he indeed brings, differently than we saw in the Keber, that he guided the Kila for 32 years. He says he guided the Kila Lamed Gimel Shanem from the year Ve'abita Neflois until the year Gala Enai Ve'abita Neflois. Those were the dates that the Ksav Soifer led his Kehila. Sechusa Yagen Aleinu Ba'al Kol Yisrael Amen. Okay, we're here in Vienna and we're at the old cemetery as opposed to the new cemetery. And there are many notable G'daylam buried here. Uh, here we're at the Kever of Rab Shabsi Sheftel Ben Akiva Levi Horowitz, who was a relative of the Shla. He wrote two interesting perushim al pi Kabbalah. First, he wrote Nishmas Shabtai Halevi, which is a Kabbalistic work on the the essence of the soul, and he wrote Shefa Tal, which is a compendium of uh, Kabbalah. So here it says he was the the Mar the Moitz Shalanu. The Maret Sedek here in Vienna, and uh, all of our tours in Neskabel, Barachim, and Baratzain. Okay, one more important Nakud over here. Rev Shabshi Sheftel Horowitz. Here it says was the Ben Hashla. So he's known as Vavay Amudim. He's the one who edited the works of the Shla Kadosh. Shla Kadosh, when he was in Prague, he wanted to go to Eretz Yisrael, but he didn't want his family to prevent him. So he basically went without letting them know. And the Sefer Shlach Kaddish was the Shlach Kaddish's ethical will, which turned from a short document into a, a massive composition. It was edited by Reb Shabsi Sheftel Harwitz, who is Nifter in Chafches Nisan. Taf? Taf Chaf Ches. Tehei Nishma Setsura V'tzar HaChaim. Okay, we're in Vienna here. We're at the cover of one of the most notable, not only Rabbonim, but figures and personalities in all of Vienna. Over here, he was the chief rabbi. He was in the Skav of the Abbezin in Prague, in Worms, and he lived here in Vienna. Reb Shimshin Vertheim. Reb Shimshin Vertheim was uh, a eminent rav, financier, banker, and he was a great askan for the Jewish people. As you see on the sign over here, this Matseva was uh, refurbished by the city because of his prestige not only to the Jewish community but for the entire region. And he had a close association with the Chavay Siyayar, Rabbi Yar Bachrach from Vermeiza. Rabbi Yar Bachrach says about him that from the times of Rav Ashi until Rav Shimshin Vartheim, we never had Torah u Gedula echad like Rav Shimshin Vartheim. Zuchus HaYogin Aleinu, Yaakov Yisrael. We're here in Vienna in the newer cemetery at the Kevra of one of the all time great Goinim, Rabbi Yosef Engel. Rabbi Yosef Engel lived from 1858 to 1920. He's the author of Ayin Panam Latayra, which is 70 answers to one question. Shev de Nechemasa, Lekach Toiv, Aslan de Raisa, which is a classic Sefer of Lamdus, Beis Ha'itzer, Tsiyunim Latayra, Gvurai Shemainim, which is a Safer of 80 answers to one question, Shaos Tzitzvah ben Pairas. He also wrote Gilyoyne Hashas. Learning a piece of Rabbi Yosef Engel is a journey through Kala Terukula, Bavli Yushalmi, Midrashim, Chasidus, Kabbalah. Just to give you one little, a uh, few little uh, flavors of the greatness of Rabbi Yosef Engel and his Torah. First of all, Rabbi Yosef Engel was a Rav in Krakow, so he gave 
a drasha on the occasion of the Yars of the Ramah, and he uh, has a, a beautiful drasha of why the students of Rabbi Kiva stopped dying on Lag Ba'imer. Rabbi Yosef Engel develops a very um, meaningful idea that thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the definition of life and what promotes life and what gives a person longer life. There are many proofs to this. Rabbi Yosef Engel says, David Amal says, Ma betza bedami God, what benefit is there if I die? Can the earth thank you? Well, if somebody dies, they can't do anything. Why is David Amalek focusing on thanking Hashem? Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, from here we see that the definition of life is thanking Hashem. And he says, we see in Moedim Drabanan, Al Al Shachi Yisrael Mekiyam Tanu Kein Techayimenu Al Shanach Nu Moedim Lach That thanking Hashem promotes life. And therefore, when they got to the fifth day of the fifth week, Hoid Sheba Hoid, Hoid is Milosh and Hoida, gratitude, Gratitude promotes life, and therefore on this day, the students of Rekiva stopped dying. This is uh, an amazing drush of Yosef Engel, why the students of Rekiva stopped dying in Lag Boimar. Another amazing marach of Yosef Engel has, is he asks, How could Yaakov Avinu say, Im lavan garti, what does Rashi say on the words, Im lavan garti, taryag, mitzvahs, shamarti, I kept the taryag mitzvahs. Really? Yaakov kept all taryag mitzvahs, but he married two sisters. So how could he say, Taryag Mitzvah Shamati? So I know you're thinking, he was allowed to, he had a terim, fine he was allowed to. But he still didn't keep it. He may have had a reason, but how could he say he kept all 613? So Rabbi Yosef has a very long maracha. This is one of the many proofs that you're allowed to be off by one. He kept 612. That's good enough. This is one of the proofs. He brings multiple proofs. For example, Paradum has to be completely red. But it's, allowed, it's not allowed to have how many uh, other hairs? Two. Why two? Why not one? One? You're allowed to be one off, says Rabbi Yosef Engel. He brings multiple rayas. Another raya the Chidah brings, by the way, is we say, uh, Yaakov Vinu says, Menashe Ephraim, Keruvein v'Shimon Yeoli. If you take the gematria of Menashe Ephraim, it's equal to Ruvein and Shemayin. The only thing is, it's off by one. It's a raya, you could be off by one. Then Rabbi Yosef Engel has an amazing... Uh, observation. Anybody know the words Oimer Ani in Mishnah? There's only one Tana really, with a few notable exceptions and maybe in the Taisefta, who says the words Oimer Ani. Who, which Tana would say Oimer Ani? Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, we only find it by Rebbe. Rebbe would say Oimer Ani. Why? Where does this come from? So says Rabbi Yosef Engel, you know the expression Nira Lafi Anias Daiti? Where does that come from? It seems according to my humble opinion. It comes from Rebbe using the words Oymar Ani, meaning you don't have to accept my opinion. This is just, Oymar Ani, this is what I say, and you're entitled to your own opinion. This is the precursor of Nero Lefiani Daiti, because Rebbe was such an anav, like the Gemara says in Soi, to Mishamais Rebbe, but la anava. Furthermore, Rabbi Yosef Engel says, Ani is the name of Hashem. Like the Gemara says in Sukkah, we say by the Simchus Vez HaShoeva, Im Ani Khan HaKol Khan. Ani is the name of Hashem. Ani Vahoi. Hayshiyana, it's one of Hashem's 72 names. Rebbe was saying, when I speak halacha, this is the Dvar Hashem, Oymar Ani, this is the Dvar Hashem, says Rabbi Yosef Engel, this is Merumaz, because there's only one time in the whole Tanakh, we have the words, Oymar Ani. You know where that is? In Tehillim. What does it say in Tehillim? Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, Perk Mem Hey. Maskil Shir Yedidais, Rachash Libi Davar Toiv, Oimer Ani, Masai Lamelech, Lashoini Eid Soifer Maher. Says Rabbi Yosef Engel, if you see the words Oimer Ani, it must be a remez to Rebbe, who said Oimer Ani. And what did Rebbe do? Masai Lamelech, an act for the king. That is, Eis Lasois Lashem, there's a time to act for the king. To do what? Lashoini, my tongue, the Tarshavah Peh, Eight soifer meyer. You need to write down. So we're there's a remez to Rebbe's way of speaking. Oimer ani. We have a remez to Rebbe's activity of writing down the Mishnah. In fact, Rabbi Yosef Engel says, amazingly, libi davar toiv soifer tevois Rebbe l'shoni gematria Yehuda hanasi. These are a few examples of ma'arachos of Rabbi Yosef Engel when the Balfour Declaration came out. The government government in Austria wanted the Rabbanim to sign a letter against the Balfour Declaration. And Rabbi Yosef Engel would not sign. He said, Kal hayad Anyone who signs against it, their hand should be cut off. 
Okay, we're here in the newer cemetery, the same cemetery as Rabbi Yosef Engel. And we're at the kever of one of the brightest luminaries of pre-war Europe. There were many, many Rebbes in pre-war Europe. But one particular one that really stood out was Ha'admer, Harav HaTzadik HaKadosh, Rabbi Yisrael, Ben Rav David Moshe of Chartikov. He was Nifta Yud Gimel Kislev in Tafrish Sagdal in 1934. At his tish, it was not rare to see 200 Rabbanim, not talking about Hasidim. He had tens of thousands of Hasidim, talking about the greatest Rabbanim in Europe. Rav Meir Arik, the Pesach Hadar of, Tar of Tarkov, he would come to Rav, uh, the Chark of Rebbe. Rav Meir Shapir of Lublin was a Hasid of the Chark of Rebbe. The Marsham was a Hasid of the Chark of Rebbe. And Marsham was astounded by the Chark of Rebbe's Yediyas HaToyra, his knowledge of Psak. So this is the Oyal here in the new cemetery. In, uh, buried in this Oyal is uh, Reb Doiv, the son of the Church of Rebbe. And then you have Rucham Sheva, the, uh, the Rebbetzin. And this is the uh, Tzion of the Church of Rebbe. Again, one of the greatest luminaries of pre-war Europe. Zuchusai, Yogen, Aleinu, V'Alko Yisrael. Amen. Amen.